I joined Ron Bear in 1979. Um, I was there till 1990 when I left to have my first child and I returned in about 1992. And uh, I did a London season with them when I performed in Wildlife. I was at Ron Bear in the 80s, so from 1981 to 87. The extraordinary thing about the choreography at Ron Bear in the 80s was that it was so richly varied. So, for example, there were pieces from choreographers like Sir Frederick Ashton and Glenn Tetley, Ashley Page. You could say um, perhaps you could put them all in one basket under the sort of classical heading. And then there were works from more contemporary choreographers either made for us or given to us that we would then learn as repertoire. So in that bracket, people like Merce Cunningham, Sue Davis, Michael Clark. Uh, and then at the same time, we were making new work with the three choreographers who were at Rombert permanently, Robert North, Christopher Bruce, and Richard Alston. And they were making such different work, I mean different from each other. So the repertoire was unbelievably varied. It was a very exciting time to be in the company. Richard, uh, to work with, uh, his approach to making pieces was, I think he was, because he was young and he was uh, very contemporary, um, he was very excited all the time and very enthusiastic. So working with him, was those things. His enthusiasm was infectious. He's also always, in my experience, been very respectful of the dancers that he works with. And um, so they always give him their best, you know, and it's always been fun to work with him. There's a lot of laughing and um, what often happens, it used to be a joke that Richard would ask you to do something choreographically and it would go disastrously wrong, like you'd fall over, and he'd clap and jump up and down and say he loved it and he wanted to keep it. <laughs> so he was really a lot of fun to work with. And it felt like the beginning of something new. I absolutely loved working with Richard um, for lots and lots of different reasons. One of the things I suppose I could say was that I felt very much in tune with where he was coming from. He was... Um, as has been well documented, he was very influenced by the Cunningham-based work that he knew very well from working with Merce in New York. He was also very influenced by the Tai Chi and the release-based work that he encountered as a student. So his movement is not ballet and it's not Cunningham, but it's very uh, free. It's kind of technical, but free, which for someone like myself, who was trained at the Royal Ballet School, it was really liberating because it wasn't so strict and confined. It was, um, you know, you were able to really cover space and use your weight. And also you could use the floor, which you don't really do in ballet. During the period I was in the company, I would say that Richard was very influenced by the dancers he met there. And um, particularly, admiring, I think, it's not too strong a word, admiring of the technique that they had. I think he loved this, the whole thing about being very fleet of foot. They were all ballet trained at that time. In fact, I think I was the only one who wasn't from a ballet school, either the Rombert School or the Royal Ballet. And they had that extraordinary articulacy in the lower legs and feet that made them able to move incredibly fast and be very, very clear with rhythmic detail. Um, and he certainly used that to really, really good effect. The other thing that I think Richard really appreciated was their musicality and their lyricism. So it wasn't just the speed and the technical skills, but it was also something very individual. They were very different one from another, although they had had classical training, all of them. Uh, they each brought something very different to the situation. I think Richard worked brilliantly with that. He would come in with an idea of what he wanted to create, but it was a real mutual, respectful relationship. He had a lot of respect for people who could perform, you know, and who were technically able to show his work in a clear and articulate way, because he likes to put a lot of detail into his movement.
What made wildlife so exciting was that he actually set out to find and explore a completely different movement language. He wanted to do something that um, shifted our comfort zone. He certainly pushed us into realms we hadn't been into before, I think it's fair to say. I don't think that audiences were used to seeing such a close collaboration between a designer, a composer and a choreographer. And on top of that, the dancers were so behind Richard in what he was doing. They worked really, really closely together. It was Richard Smith, Richard Alston and Nigel Osborne. He was incredibly excited to have conversations with the other two artists working alongside him before he got into the studio. I remember that we were on tour and there was a lot of discussion in the dressing rooms or after the show about the new piece we were about to make and the ideas that were being exchanged already. There was one time I remember very clearly going to his hotel room and being shown early drawings from the artist Dick Smith and how fired up Richard was about starting to work on these new ideas. So that was very exciting. What was different about wildlife was that the set actually interrupted the stage space. Huge kites came in and out on wires and they also turned in the space. So they affected how much stage space you had to dance in. And although they had predetermined pathways to move in and out and to turn, they didn't always do what they were supposed to. So there was always the sense that you had to be alert and ready to shift directions in space or to do things slightly differently. Um, I think that inevitably that will have affected significantly how the audience saw the piece, because literally sometimes the dancers weren't visible. And it certainly affected how we felt dancing the piece. It was, um, on the one hand, you felt very exposed because the costumes were very tight all-in-ones. And on the other hand, you knew that sometimes you weren't even visible to the audience because the stage sets, the kites, were literally in the way. So it was a strange mixture of things. Richard always was influenced by his dancers. Um, I think he has a really good eye and he allows you to, even though you're not improvising and you're not making up the material yourself, um, you do feel very much part of the creative process. And um, he m makes you feel very comfortable. He really cast against type. So for example, up until then, most of the work that Kate had danced had been very, very fast. She was the most amazingly technical dancer and she could spin like a top. And she was really, really quick and she could jump. And so therefore people used all these attributes. And in wildlife, Richard gave her a very, very slow duet, very lyrical, very soft. So for her, that was something quite unusual. And then on the other hand, I tended to get the slow duets or the work which was, um, we would say, adage, standing around on one leg for a very long time or moving incredibly slowly which I always loved to do. So for me, it was quite unusual to be asked to move so swiftly with sharply accented movement. And, uh, I'm, and the solo does actually demand quite a lot of control as well, but it was the mixture of those two things that was unusual. I found that quite difficult. He really challenged you, but that kept the company happy because you didn't get stuck in a rut you were allowed to develop and you found out things about yourself and what you were capable of that perhaps you weren't aware of it was like uh, creating a world it was very atmospheric um and it was very, you were very immersed in what you were doing. When you were performing, you were very involved in creating this world uh, and this atmosphere. There was a lot more opportunity to make suggestions and to try things out. And that was also true, for example, in Strong Language. I was in the opening duet with Mark Baldwin. And the way Richard worked on that 
was to bring many, many suggestions into the studio, but also to invite suggestions. Or, for example, he would know that he wanted the sense of a lift, but he wasn't quite sure how to achieve it. And we would try lots of different things out until he said, yes, like that. And then we'd have to try to replicate it. So there was a lot of trial and error, and there was a lot of, um, yeah, room for making suggestions. But a lot of the movement material he brought with him. And then it was a question of how you would interpret it as an individual dancer and the individual character that you brought to it, largely through a sense of musicality, I would say. He was very keen to bring out the musicality in, in each of us. Strong language was completely different in a way. It was about three years later, and uh, at the time, it was really cool. It was a really cool piece. The music was like a collage of sound um, with really funky rhythms in it. And the costumes were by a designer called Catherine Hamnett. And the men wore these beautiful suits and the women these really short skirts, which I wasn't very happy about, but, and box jackets. And um, it was very different to wildlife in the way that we were very much ourselves. It was a very extrovert piece. Um, very free at the same time as being very precise and rhythmically very clear. Um, so it's a big contrast to wildlife, but uh, it was fantastic fun to do. And um, the audiences used to go mad. It was always the last piece of the evening and they used to absolutely love it. And really it was a combination of all the different elements, you know, costumes, music, Choreography was a fabulous piece. Every year I teach uh, rep uh, to the third year students here at London Contemporary. And um, this year we're going to be learning uh, an excerpt from Strong Language. Um, I've taught it in the past. I, I always teach a Richard Olson piece. And uh, one of the reasons, well, the reason that I teach Strong Language is because you know, we do, we need group sections. So as the students learn how to work together, um, we do unison sections. So as they, they learn about timing and being able to work together without actually looking at each other. Um, it's because of the uh, detail of the rhythm and the challenges, technically, it's really good for their development uh, as performers. And also it's fun, really good fun to do. And, um, it's very good as an exercise in performing and focusing and um, projecting out. Wildlife is, was a much more internal focus, kind of more self-absorbed. I'm not sure that that's the right word, but where strong language was very extrovert and kind of sassy, really.